with uh, Nicolas and Henry from Nigeria, who will be presenting and reducing the impact of the rainy season and informal sites of flood mitigation activities. So, Nicolas, Henry, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Nicolas. I am the uh, camp management manager for, for NRC uh, Nigeria, uh, previously working with NRC as well in, uh, in Iraq. Good morning, everyone. My name is Henry with NRC, the system project coordinator. Thank okay. Um, thank you, Amalia. So um, we are going to, uh, to present you um, the NRC response in terms of uh, flood mitigation in uh, informal sites in Maiduguri. Um, I will start with an overview of, uh, of, of the situation in, uh, in Maiduguri uh, urban area, so you better understand the context. Um, so a few key, uh, key figures here. Uh, Maiduguri urban area uh, is hosting about 269,341 IDPs. Uh, in a total of 143 uh, sites. Uh, out of these 143 sites, NRC is currently, um, I mean, I started managing 38 sites in 2020 uh, for a population of uh, 61,000 IDPs. We just scaled up to 60, uh, to 50 sites, sorry. Uh, most of these sites are informal uh, and are uh, scattered in the, in the urban uh, landscape of Maiduguri, as you can see in, in the map. Uh, this is a, um, a map of Maiduguri with, uh, with the sites that NRC is covering at the moment. Um, most of the sites uh, that we have taken over in 2020 are with, um, suffering from a lack of services, in particular shelter, NFI, uh, wash, um, and, 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 and most of the, of the essential services. Um, NRC is using a mobile approach, so we have mobile teams that are covering these different uh, informal sites. Um, and we have a total of 17 staff. So I will start um, presenting uh, the rainy season preparedness assessment that NRC has been doing in uh, early 2020, uh, also to, uh, to show a little bit the challenges that, uh, that we've been facing in, in these camps when, when we started working there uh, in, uh, in March, uh, and, and for, for you to see the situation in terms of um, vulnerability to, to, to floods and to, to the rainy season. Um, so we conducted an assessment in, uh, in May 2020 uh, in 37 informal sites. Uh, we interviewed 40 key informants and we also conducted a direct observation. Um, we based our, um, our assessment in a, in a scoring system um, focusing especially on shelter situation, on uh, flood prone areas, uh, on lack of accessibility, and also on the existence of uh, site maintenance committees in, in those particular sites. So you can see in the, on, in the right uh, graph uh, this scoring for each, for some of the sites that we've been uh, assessing. So first, um, I will. Um, I will, I will give uh, an overview of the shelter situation uh, in, in, in these informal sites, where most of the, the shelters are uh, makeshift shelters. As you can see in the picture, they are made, by, uh, they are made with uh, local materials that can be uh, sticks, straws, plastics, um, um, yeah, lo local materials like that. Um, for 58% of the, of the persons that we have interviewed, uh, the most common type of shelters in their site is uh, makeshift shelters. Uh, and in 12, uh, for 12 of the key informants, these makeshift shelters were actually uh, between 75 or 100% of the total of, of the shelters. Um, you can see here uh, two other uh, makeshift shelters. Uh, you can see some are using uh, zinc uh, and uh, it's basically uh, a lot of different local materials that, that uh, people uh, gather. So uh, these shelters are, um, are particularly vulnerable to, to, uh, to floods and, and, and winds and elements. Um, so when we ask the quality of makeshift shelters uh, in, in terms of protection against elements, 92% of the respondents uh, confirmed that the quality of these makeshift shelters in terms of protection against wind, rain, or floods is poor or very poor. 
Um, also, 51% of the key informants confirmed that there were uh, many dilapidated shelters in the sites uh, that we assessed. Um, dilapidated shelters, as we, you can see in the pictures, so these were previously emergency shelters that were constructed by uh, humanitarian actors um, and uh, that are in a very, very bad, bad shape, as you can, as you can see. Um, Okay, in terms of flood prone areas and drainage system, uh, that's also one of the areas that, uh, that we assessed. 89% um, of, the, of the respondents uh, confirmed that there was a prevalence of flooding and stagnant water that was affecting the, the camps during the rainy season. Um, you can see some pictures here uh, of uh, camps at the beginning of, of the, the rainy season 2020 with uh, shelters uh, that are completely flooded, some areas that are completely isolated from the rest of the camp, and the absence of uh, drainage system to drain the water out. 78% um, of, of the key informants confirmed that the flooding affects shelters uh, with like leaking roof or also water that infiltrates through the door or, through, or beneath the, the shelters. Uh, also 49 confirmed that the flooding also affects water points. And, um, and latrines for 38% of the, of the respondents. You can see here in the pictures uh, some latrines uh, that are flooded and also water points in the right picture uh, with like uh, stagnant water that uh, cannot be evacuated. Um, in addition to that, uh, the respondents um, for 80, 86% confirmed that there, were, there was never any kind of support or intervention in terms of prevention of flooding in the, in the sites. Um, for 84%, 84 there, was, uh, there was no any uh, drainage system that was never constructed in the camp. And for 41%, uh, some of the areas uh, in, in the camps are completely isolated when, uh, when there are rains, as, as we, can, we could see in the picture before. So now I will uh, hand over to Henry, uh, who will explain a bit of the response that NRC put in place in 2020. So, thank you. You've listened to Nicolas talk about the assessments we did from May to understand how it was before we started responding. I would be presenting the response so far. Here is a camp where we are responding by pumping water out of the flooded areas using the water pumps which we procured. Formation of one of the one of the first things we did was to, to form site maintenance committees. We were able to create 35 site maintenance committees and equip them, equip them with tools for site maintenance. You could see here uh, people giving wheelbarrows and tools for site maintenance, site improvement and flood mitigation. So we were able to recruit 1,758 persons, beneficiaries for cash for work activity. You could see here people doing work, sorry. Out of which 44% were elderly people, 22 were women headed households, 9% were people with disability, and gender segregation is 66% were male, 34% were female through cash for work activities. So coordination with emergency partners and preparedness. Part of our activity was coordination with sectors, with the CCM sector and partners which are RRM, Shelter, WASH, HLP partners. So we were able to refer cases to shelter, our shelter CCC and sector, and our core CC, which is NRC Shelter, that 1,389 new shelters were constructed, 681 were repaired at our, due to our referral to NRC Shelter. We were able to procure water pumps, sandbags, a lot of materials for our site maintenance committee. So our physical activity, part of what we've achieved, we were able to construct 3,376 meters of drainage in, six, in 16 sites. You could see uh, an analysis CCCM staff trying to construct local drainage in one of these sites. Construction of access routes and pathways, we were able to construct eight 812 meters of length of access route. You could see here, after some filling and creating access route to the camp, initially you could not access this side of the camp. 254 meters of footpath were created. We were actually able to arrange 
sandbags to create footpaths along the sites in most sites. We were able to procure sand, gravel, and rubble stones in all our sites where we needed them. Major challenge towards this activity was delaying payment due to inadequate payment method. We faced a lot of network issues when we tried to use mobile payment and paying cash was actually difficult to move around due to network and other constraints. Inclusion of beneficiaries, we were not able to work actually. We, ha we had an idea where we could include people who are not able to work and they would identify family members who would work on their behalf so as to ensure everybody has a piece of the has worked or benefited from our activity. So these are two major challenges we experienced during the activity. Thank you all. So next steps for improvements. We are taking over 12 new informal sites, deploy to out of camp location and assess improvement needs, support and reinforce capacity of site maintenance committee, which is one of the activities we are focusing on. We are trying to reinforce their capacity and build their capacity and have them be able to do more. Increase involvement of women. As you saw, we had 34% women benefiting from cash for work in Northeast Nigeria is a patriarchal system where women are actually mostly not participating. We are trying to involve, increase women participation in activities. We enforce coordination with sectors, sector partners, increase assessment and referral. Going forward towards 2021, we are actually trying to increase referral and advocacy because most of our sites are informal sites. So we are trying to increase advocacy to, to, so, so that partners will come in and intervene more. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you guys for this interesting presentation. I see there's a question from Giovanna in the chat um, about the community participation in the assessment evaluation. Do you wanna address this one? Um, I invite also other participants to type your questions in the chat. Um, Amalia, if you don't mind, I'm just raising a bit my question because um, I did it in the beginning of presentation. Um, I want to ask uh, um, a bit, if you guys can uh, tell us a bit more about the challenge to engage the communities. And then also, if, uh, um, I mean, what would be your recommendation in terms of, uh, you know, it is uh, um, you know, response uh, focusing on, uh, uh, on the sites, you know, what would be your recommendation in order to have uh, um, yeah, the mobilization of the community, but uh, they really active uh, participation and also initiative. So if you have any challenges and if you have any, yeah, recommendation or suggestion or best practice. Yeah, um, I, I, okay, maybe I know you can complete me after. Uh, one of the challenges we had, uh, Giovanna, when we initiated this activity was to, uh, to ensure that this cash for work system was not going to uh, uh, w w was not going to be an issue because we are also doing uh, you know community participation uh, in the camps. So what is the difference? You know, like wh when do we pay people for work, or, and when do we ask people to to mobilize uh, on a voluntary basis? You know, um, so we were lucky that the, uh, the 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 early recovery sector in my degree had already. Uh, worked on, on SOPs for, for cash for work and there are specific tasks that have been uh, identified as not, uh, how, how do you say, like not hard, you know, like the, 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 the task that doesn't require uh, a lot of like phys physical, yeah, physical activity, physical str uh, strength, uh, penibility, you know, they, they should be encouraged as part of community, you know, participation and the tasks that require uh, Penibility, like carrying heavy weights, or you know, like digging drainages or sand filling, uh, should be considered as you know payable. Like we should pay people for that because of the penibility. So that that was the uh, yeah how how we managed to divide between cash for work and uh, and, and community participation. Um, then maybe other question was related to um, selection criteria, right? Um, I'm not sure. No, no, it was not too much. I mean, but uh, uh, if you want to, to elaborate more on the selection, it was not too much about that. It was I was curious just to understand, you know, how you um, 
no, yeah, how you put together like this, uh, you know, this comedy yeah. and the cash for work and not work on the participation. And yeah. also, um, yeah, if you have any best practice, uh, but yeah, this one on the SOP is a um, uh, very good point. Yeah, so, so, so the idea was to, uh, to, to, to kill two birds with, uh, with one stone. Uh, you know, like doing such improvement and like uh, reducing the, the impact of floods in the camps with, with uh, such improvement works. And at the same time, providing some income to vulnerable, uh, you know, like IDPs, uh, because most of these people don't have access to livelihood and in many sites, uh, people are not even receiving food. So um, we also wanted to support uh, the community with, uh, with, uh, with, with, you know, with like income. And... Um, we, we we had some um, so we had a community approach with the with the community leaders to see how to better identify uh, households uh, that were maybe more vulnerable than ours that, than others sorry and uh, include them in this um, in this cash work activity and also we wanted to have a short rotation to ensure that more people could benefit so the rotation is basically five days people work five days and then we rotate we hire uh, additional uh, you know, new workers, so we can have like more more people benefiting from the activity. Uh, thank you very much, and Henry, for the presentation. I will have to uh, cut you here because we have the next presenter ready. Um, thank you very much for your presentation, and um, I will ask if any other participant has more questions. You, you can put them in the chat, and I'm sure Nicolas and Henry will be um, happy to respond. Thank you very much.